Thank you so much uh, for joining us for this very special last session. Um, I'm honored to work at Northwell um, and to be part of this incredible organization. And I, I want to just start off on saying that this kind of forum can have an incredible impact on one person. It had an impact on me back in 2019. I was asked to moderate a panel at one of the first gun violence prevention forums, and it brought together experts and doctors just like you in this room who talked about why this is a public health issue and encouraged action. I heard people talk about the bullet as the vector, the same way we talk about viruses and infectious disease, the lack of investment in gun violence research in a scientific manner, the high rates of suicide with guns, and the anguish of trauma surgeons having to tell family members about their deceased loved ones, and the massive ripple effects that spread beyond the dead to the injured, the families, and communities. Wearing my two hats of doctor and journalist, I couldn't understand why the media was not discussing this in the very clear and scientific manner that all the doctors and experts in this room were. So it became my mission to use the media to help Americans understand why this is our lane and why this is a public health issue. I've had the pleasure in those last several years of learning from Kristen Song, from Erica Ford, from Chethan Sathya, from Megan Ranney, from Joe Sacron, Emmy Betts, so many experts that I spoke to who told us what we're missing in the story that we're telling in the media. One of the very important things I learned, and that obviously we know in the world of journalism, is the value of personalizing and storytelling. You heard about this this morning, and humanizing this. We heard from my former resident uh, at the Brigham, Vivek Murthy, say we can't look away anymore. And one of the things, one of the ways that we stop looking away is by putting faces on the stories of this over and over again. For every soul who dies from a bullet, there are survivors who must bury their loved ones or live with chronic injuries. And those survivors live with a silent, invisible pain that is a constant reminder of the damage one bullet can do. And then there are survivors who lift their voices for change so others won't have to suffer. Many of those are parents and siblings and loved ones. I had the honor of speaking, as I said, to Kristen Song, who told me how she humanizes this. She walks uh, people through Ethan's last day, tells them about how he got his braces off, talks about the ER doctor sliding down the wall, saying, your son is gone. I talked to Mark Barden, who told me he always carries pictures of his son Daniel with him. And he talks about those last moments that morning when his son wanted to take a picture of the sunrise with the Christmas lights sparkling. These are the things that we remember. And we have the honor today <coughs> and the pleasure of being joined by Jasmine and Gloria, who hopefully will leave you walking away from this room remembering and honoring their sister, their daughter, Jackie, and also Annabelle as well. So please welcome them, um, and thank you so much for, for coming today. Of course, yeah. Jasmine uh, and Gloria, you've both been strong advocates for gun safety since the horrific shooting that took Jackie and Annabelle at Robb Elementary last year. You've called for common sense reforms to keep Americans safe from gun violence at the national level. But for your family, this issue is deeply personal. Can you please share what it has been like for your family to grapple with the incredible loss that you've suffered over the last year? Um, well, on May 24th, of course, my world came crumbling down. Um, I used to say, this is Jackie's world. I just live in it. And that day, I lost a huge part of my world. It was, it was gone just instantly. Um, but since then, I knew that we had to we had to be part of the fight, the fight to prevent any more gun violence victims. Um, I want to thank, of course, all the activists, the parents, everybody that has been here before us. There's no way that I would be here without your advice, your comfort, if it wasn't for you guys. Well, I can't speak for as a parent, but as an older sibling, you don't expect to watch your little sister or little brother's casket being put into a six feet hole. So it's, it's a very bittersweet thing to be here because I see faces of change, but we shouldn't have to be here. You're both from a conservative part of the country 
where the climate around gun safety is very different from how it is here in New York. What was it like growing up in a place with a strong gun culture, and how is that changing, if at all? Here we go. Go ahead. Okay. Well, I grew up around guns. My dad is a gun owner, a responsible gun owner, but I have been shooting guns ever since my dad was able to teach me how to handle them safely. And I don't know how many times I can say it, how many times I have to reiterate, we are not trying to take away your guns. We are just trying to make it safer for all, the Ameri for all Americans and to save a life because I don't, it, just, it just feels, it's common sense to protect the most innocent in this country and those children and they can't even make it home from school. Same. Just listening to your mayor. Governor. Um, I'm sorry, Governor. <laughs> um, I wish Abbott would just sit down and talk to her. Um, there's really nothing else to say about that. We haven't. You know, it's been hard. It's been really hard in Texas. Mm -hmm. um, but that's why we're trying to help federally. Mm -hmm. All the leaders here in this room in healthcare, in business, in government, are dedicated to addressing America's problem of gun violence. How can we honor Jackie and Annabelle in our work? Well, speaking about the horrifics of gun violence is just the tip of the iceberg. So, of course, advocacy, um, talking to politicians, talking to parents, just making sure these kids aren't forgotten and making sure your kid isn't the next one. Same, just um, we're here today telling our stories um, and that's what I want you to do is share their stories. You know, tell everybody about Jackie and Annabelle and all those other gun violence victims. Um, I just don't, I don't want any other parent to have to be sitting up here that we are, the way we are. It's the way things are going, you are, you're gonna have a different family up here next year. What gives you the strength to go on and do you see hope? in this conversation? Yes, um, sometimes it does get lost after another shooting. There's another shooting, there's another shooting, there's another shooting. And our purpose is to stop that. So it is, we lose hope sometimes, but seeing people like this speaking out, seeing siblings, parents telling their children's stories, survivors telling their own stories, it does, you get a little glimmer of hope. What message would you have for parents or siblings? Being on this side of the screen isn't as fun as you think it is. Um, you don't want to be the one sitting in front of a camera. But since we are here, it's, it's very disheartening. But if it feels like it's common sense, you know? Like, I wouldn't even know how else to put that into words. I just think kids need to be safe. We need to feel safe going to the movie theater, going to school, going to malls, going to churches, and we don't. Same, just, um, <clears throat> just cherish those moments with your kids. You know, hug them, hold them a little bit tighter when you can. And what message would you want people to leave uh, this room with? How do you want to honor your sister and your daughter, their legacy? Well, my sister was a little, little sassy girl. And she, she was nine years old, but she acted like she was 17. So you just want your kids to grow up. So do something about it. Like I said, just cherish every moment. Is there anything else that you think is important to tell our audience, to anyone who's listening, that I didn't ask you anything else you want to share? Don't give up the fight. Um, of course, I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for this. And I'm glad I'm here. But at the same time, I wish I wasn't here. So don't wait until it's you that's up here. 
just thank you. It's an honor being here. Thank you for everybody. Thank you, every, everybody, everything you do. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you for thank sharing you. your story. Thank you.